guys and welcome to my showcase and tutorial for Paintball. Paintball is an arena plugin that spawns a dynamic paintball event high up in the sky. Players can join the event from anywhere on the map and all the equipment and items are stored while they participate. There are two types of arenas that come standard with the plugin, both of which are automatically acquired by the plugin when it loads for the first time. Each arena will spawn trees, logs and bushes based on the biome below to match the aesthetic on the ground. Joining a game is a simple matter of typing a chat command in when the event is running. Like this. There are two types of game modes which are chosen randomly when the game begins. Team Deathmatch and Free For All. Team Deathmatch requires a certain number of players to be enrolled when the game begins before it becomes a valid option. So by default there requires four players to be participating. Uh, all players who are on the winning team will be rewarded when the game ends. When the player takes a hit, a paintball will appear on their screen with a random size, colour and position. They will also have a hit added to the counter at the top of the screen. When a player is eliminated, the effect will, uh, an effect will run, which is defaults and explosion, and the game will end. The winners are declared when the game, when the game mode ends. And you can see here that because it was a free-for-all and the new guy has won the game, you've been given one prize, which I could type PB prize to redeem, and I've also received um, some server reward points for winning as well. Prizes are highly configurable and allow for most default and custom items to be added. You can type the configurable, com configurable command in, PB prize, to roll the prize on the table. You can see here I received 203 scrap, uh, and I have zero, remain zero prize redemptions remaining. The plugin also supports economics and server rewards. These are awarded when the game ends and do not require a redemption. Now we're going to move on to the configuration of the plugin. Okay, so the configuration of Paintball is quite simple yet powerful. We're going to take it option by option and I'll explain what each of the, uh, each of the config options do. So how many entities should we spawn and remove per tick when building and removing an arena? This is just simply for lag, so if you don't want your server to lag uh, too much, set the, the value to a lower value. Um, but 20 is, it seems to be kind of perfect. Um, and this is just basically how many entities it's going to be basically build or remove each game tick. Uh, how long should the lobby be active for before the game starts? By default, it's actually higher than 30, it's three minutes from memory, um, but you can change that to as many seconds as you like. Uh, how long after the lobby closes before the game before the game starts? So basically this is the point where the lobby countdown is finished. This is how long before the game actually begins and the players are teleported above. Minimum players for the game to start. This is actually default 2. It was just set to 1 for testing purposes. Minimum players for the game to be eligible for a team deathmatch. By default this is 4. This basically means that uh, it will require a minimum of 4 players before a team deathmatch uh, game mode can be rolled. Uh, snowball gun magazine capacity is 10 by default. This is just how many snowballs at each, uh, whenever a reload happens, that a snowball is given. Um, hits a player can take before they are eliminated. Default is 10. This is how many paintball hits a player can take before they are removed from the game. Uh, use night vision plugin to lock the player's time at the event. I uh, highly recommend the night, vi night vision plugin. Um, it basically makes it so it's daytime above. Uh, time after players win before the game ends. Uh, by default it's 5 seconds, so this is a 5 second sort of end of game timer before the arena is despawned and the, the winning player is removed from the game. Uh, the clothing settings for free for all team uh, team 1 and team 2, these are just basically hazmat suits but you can have you know non-hazmats and just make them you know metal metal chest pieces or wood armor or whatever whatever you want. You can have you know up to 6 or 7 items in here depending on the amount of slots Rust has for their uh, clothing worn container. Um, Event Helper Settings returns the player uh, back immediately after respawn. This is basically required for servers running um, any sort of respawn plugins. So, you know, respawn, I grab, respawn, I re respawn to your sort of death location when you die, um, and that sort of thing. You want to set that to false, otherwise, just leave that as true. And what that'll do is that'll give the players items back immediately when they respawn and set them back at their previous location. Um, use Event Helper to schedule the events. Uh, highly recommended, that way the Event Helper plugin will automatically cycle through and, and start the event randomly rather than you having to manually start it. Uh, commands to prevent players when, uh, when players are not at the event. So basically any command in here will 
be prevent will not be runnable when the player is at the event. So add any sort of custom commands that your server runs. Allow players to stay in a team when they join the event. Um, by setting this to false, what this will do is this will deconstruct the team, store it into a uh, into a, a dictionary, into a list, sorry, and then when the when the game mode ends, it will uh, reconstruct the team with the same team leaders and everything else, or place them into the existing team if the team still exists. Um, don't think it'll work with clans plugins and any other plugins that modify the team values, so would recommend setting this to true if you're using any plugin like that. Um, otherwise, leave it as false if you're not. Uh, automatically try to remove old arenas when the plugin loads. Um, basically, when it loads up for the first time, it will attempt to basically clean up any, any existing uh, arenas if they are still there, which they shouldn't be, but sometimes it does happen. So uh, it gets stored in data and, and um, it will get cleaned up from there. These are the uh, sound effects. Uh, so the, uh, sorry, the, the, the placeholders um, for our, our prefabs. I highly recommend leaving these alone. Um, these are really, the, these are the entities that I use to build the arenas. So the barbecue represents the, the lobby spawn point. Um, the pookie bears are tree, uh, tree placeholders. You know, bush, bushes are electrical branches, etc., etc. Uh, spawn location um, prefab. Uh, placeholder prefabs again. These are these are these are more map orientated ones, so I wouldn't touch any of these. Uh, these ones here, however, you can edit to your heart's content. So these are basically assets of uh, different trees that spawn in different biomes. So you can see you've got arid, temperate, tundra, and arctic. Uh, and these are the different types of trees that will spawn randomly. So if a tree uh, spawn is called for a particular location, it'll roll one of these random trees. So each arena is going to look different whenever it spawns. Same with the logs and same with the bushes. These are all functioning the same way. So you can go and add or remove as many or as little prefab, uh, prefab lines as you like. Uh, UI settings, uh, list of Steam Workshop IDs with the paintball splats. Now these just simply represent the paintball splats from my workshop. Um, if you want to create uh, your own, you can uh, and upload them to the Steam Workshop. All you need to do is just simply add or change or remove these, uh, these IDs to represent them. And these represent different colored paintballs. Maximum distance from the center center screen on the X angle that the splat can appear. Uh, this is basically the this, um, the the distance from the center of the screen that the splat can kind of vary a vary a, sorry change. So it'll it'll kind of roll a, a random direction and a random value in that direction and yeah, kind of creates a circle area that it can play in. So if you find some paintballs are too close to the center, you can increase this value, or if they, if they find they're you know, too close to the side, you can change that. Like you can remove the values, or, or sorry, uh, lower the values. Paintball splat size this is the size of the actual paintball on the UI. Um, you can change this if you like. It'll roll. Yeah, it'll it'll basically roll a a, 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 a random value. Uh, and then the transparency. This is basically the uh, the transparency of the paintball. So just still allow, allowing players to actually see through the paintball. These are the commands to leave and join an event. These can, uh, again, you can change these to whatever you like. Uh, the time that the players uh, that the intruder has to vacate before killing. So this is basically for the the intruder um, detection system. So if a player attempts to fly up there on a minicopter or some other form of transportation, uh, if they get within a, a certain radius of the arena, they'll basically get told to leave. With, uh, and if they don't, they'll be killed. And this is how long they have to leave once entering the uh, the no-fly zone. The time between checks for the outsiders is just simply how how often do we want to check if you know outsiders are your area in our, our zone, and the distance buffer to catch intruders early. So basically, this gives that little bit of extra buffer outside of the zone um, as like an early warning. Exclude players with um, a admin flag. So if you know if you want admins to be able to still fly up there, set that as true. Uh, economic rewards, server rewards, these are pretty straightforward. It will give you a, minute, a random value between these two values here as an economics reward. Same for the server reward points. And then we have our item configuration. So basically, uh, this is the prize pool here. Uh, this is the prize command here. This is how many rolls on the table a player will get per prize redemption. And these are the list of the, pl of the, uh, the prizes that a player can get. Um, so by default, it's just scrap, sulfur, and stone of varying values. It'll roll a random number between minimum and maximum, um, and then it'll yeah. But 
if you wanted to add your own custom item, what you can do is you can just simply copy the template here, paste in the new value, and then we can do, I don't know, rifle.ak11 skin, some random skin off the workshop, let's assume that's a skin, we can give it its own custom cool display name, uh, and then set the drop weight depending on how, how what the likelihood we want this to be to roll. So if we don't want this to be a very common item, we can lower the value um, and it becomes less common. And item.txt require, this is basically for certain plugins that require this field, such as item perks and uh, some cooking as well. Um, I, I'm sure there's a few other plugins that do too, but basically yeah, item, item.txt can be added in there as well if you want to add even more customization based on a plugin's requirements. Uh, list of commands to run when a player wins. Um, these are basically, yeah, if you want to run commands for a player, um, you know, adding them to oxide groups or, you know, running point redemptions or, or whatever, like whatever else you want to do, giving them XP, like, yeah, you can do heaps of stuff with this um, and you can use the, uh, the user ID, um, yeah, the user ID, uh, break between the curly braces here to represent the player's user ID when running commands and the name for, obviously, if, if, if applicable as well. Uh, notification settings. Uh, how often should we remind players that the lobby is open? So this will basically, by default, every 60 seconds while the lobby is open, it'll remind players that the lobby is open and how long it has left to go. Um, should, we, should we remind players when there is only 30 seconds left? And if should we remind players when there's only 10 seconds left? This is just for the final call. Um, if you find there's too much spam, you can increase this value and set that to false. Uh, and these are the sound settings. So these are basically prefab um, uh, effect prefabs. So you only want to use effect prefabs in here, um, and this will run those prefabs for players based on these uh, these interactions. So when a player takes a hit, you know they get this sound. <laughs> when they redeem a prize, they get this sound, etc., etc. So pretty straightforward. Um, again, look, quite quite malle quite malleable um, this config, um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll be adding more stuff to it as we go. Uh, if you guys have any feedback, any suggestions, always love to hear it, um, and I really hope you guys enjoy this one.